Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, it's been a whole 72 hours since we got to talk about this the last time. But yes, there are more developments in the continuing saga of the solvent trap. So let's spend a couple minutes today and talk about the ATF gives us specific instructions on diversified machine parts. Okay, before we get rolling, you guys know the drill. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button down below. If you want to stay up to date on issues related to your Second Amendment rights, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Click the little bell logo if you want to be notified when we post new videos. Most importantly, let's keep the comments and discussions coming, especially around this issue related to solvent traps, because I know that we're having different experiences depending on whereabouts in the country we are, so we definitely want to hear about your experiences as well. Okay, uh, let's back up, get some historical perspective on how we got to where we are today. February 1st, 2022. Back in August of 21, we did a video. We kind of realized some of you might be buying these solvent traps and doing things with them that you shouldn't be doing uh, without completing ATF paperwork. And we told you back at that time, hey, don't think that's a particularly good idea. Fast forward to early 2022, we learned that ATF has gone out, raided several of these companies, including a company called Diversified Machine, and many of you began to receive nasty little letters from the ATF saying, hey, you may be in violation of federal law. We did a video to find out how serious was the ATF about coming after you on that, and then we started reaching out to the ATF to try to figure out what the heck's really going on here and what do these people need to do? And there were several videos that we did in relation to the communications that we had with the ATF. Now, we, as you know, we got bounced around from agent to agent, field office to field office, and we finally got in touch with an agent, Montana, who is just right here in the Puget Sound region, and he has been remarkably helpful. Now, as you also are aware, we have two individuals. It was Aaron and Matthew. Those are the names we were using. Both of these gentlemen had purchased diversified machine parts, converted them into suppressors back in 2016, done all the appropriate ATF paperwork, received ATF approval, and had basically owned these things lawfully for approximately six years. Now, they were being told that they needed to either surrender these or to provide evidence of their destruction. We contacted counsel for the ATF to get clarification, and he insisted that those individuals, in fact, needed to turn those devices in. When we got a hold of Agent Montana, however, the field agent who's enforcing this uh, edict, if you would, uh, he said that in, the, in, in his opinion, these individuals who had completed Form 1s, received ATF approval, as long as those forms checked out, that was the end of it, they could go ahead and keep those devices. Now, while we were doing this, I was contacted by another individual. We're going to call him Kyle. And Kyle kind of fell into the first category of individuals, which is those who purchased parts from Diversified Machine and never did anything with them. Never converted them, never even used them. They're still in the original packaging. They're wondering why the hell they even ordered them to begin with. Now, as you are aware, we were told by the ATF Chief Counsel, which is Mr. Tibbetts, that those individuals would need to arrange for a surrender of those parts. Now, when I was contacted by Kyle, he was more than willing to surrender the parts. They were useless as far as he was concerned to waste the money, and he was happy to give them up. I reached out to contact, I reached out to Agent Montana and said, okay, what do we do about individuals? And I want to share with you the response because this is a little bit different than the responses we've had in past. There is some more information here. And for those of you who are watching around the country, I want you to take note of this because this is kind of important. My message to him read as follows. Agent Montana, I have an individual who has contacted me that resides in this region, and he did purchase some parts from a diversified machine but never did anything with them. They are still in their original form, and he is happy to surrender them if need be. He does not have a Form 1, as he never converted any of these parts into a suppressor. How would you like to proceed on these matters? And I think what you, I want you to pay careful attention to is what he's saying about these categories of individuals and what you need to do here. And then we're going to talk about whether or not that's the right thing to do. Agent Montana states, Mr. Kirk, if this individual simply wants to surrender these parts to the ATF, we can arrange that. For any diversified machine-specific questions, please direct them to the DM-specific email inbox 
And the email address is atfdetquestions at atf.gov. And again, I'll put the link for that email right there for you so you guys can all see it. Um, but what he is saying, what Agent Montana is saying as of February 1st, 2022 at approximately 5.30 Pacific Standard Time, p.m., okay? Um, what Agent Montana is saying is, is that if you have diversified machine parts that you have done nothing with them, you are to contact the, uh, the ATF through this particular email address. Okay, so with that email address, yesterday I sent out an email to uh, the ATF to inquire on behalf of Kyle and receive. And then, of course, I sent another email early this morning to the same email address and so far to date have received. So I decided to reach back out to Agent Montana. And again, I, I do want to commend him because from a customer service standpoint at the ATF, He's about it right now, and he's done an excellent job. He's been very responsive. But what I did say to him was, is Agent Montana, I just wanted to let you know that I've sent two emails to that email address and have yet to receive a return. Candidly, other than yourself, it has been very difficult communicating with this agency. And Agent Montana, to his credit, responded, I do understand your frustration, and I have notified the appropriate inbox owners of your possible inquiries. At this time, I have been directed to divert any specific questions regarding diversified machine to that email in inbox. And again, I, I, I understand completely Agent Montana is following his directives and orders, and so that's what he's been told to do. Now, let's take a step back and talk about what we should be doing here. I again have state. I will again state that I do not believe that the individuals who purchased these parts and didn't do anything with them are really in any kind of legal jeopardy. I sincerely believe that the ATF only wants these parts back. But am I absolutely 100% confident about that? Well, no, this is the ATF. And as we know, no organization, no agency anywhere on the planet moves the goalposts more than the ATF. So, what is my advice? My advice is for any of you, where, whether you're in the Puget Sound region, the state of Washington, or anywhere else in the country, if you have been contacted with a letter by the ATF, you need to contact local counsel and have them contact the ATF on your behalf. In all instances which I have spoken with Agent Montana or anybody else with the ATF, I have never identified any of my clients. The only time my clients were identified was when we provided them with Form 1s upon their request, and candidly, the ATF already had those Form 1s. I do caution you about contacting the ATF directly. I caution what you may say, what you may interpret, what they may interpret from what you say. Um, this is an agency that has proven to be less than trustworthy at times, and so for that reason, I do caution you, and I highly recommend that you go through competent counsel to contact the ATF on your behalf. Listen, I know you're gonna have more questions about these solvent traps or anything uh, related to your Second Amendment rights. And if you do, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or of course you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.